Welcome to Willie D Live. We're about to go in with Olympic, one of the greatest Olympic champions ever, Carl Lewis. But before we do, as always, we like to start the show off with a bit of good news. Today's good news moment is brought to you by Good Spy and comes out of Newark, New Jersey, where Robert Clark is giving kids in low-income neighborhoods a chance at living a better life. For kids who have grown up in low-income neighborhoods, it can be hard to see a way out. Seeing the adults around them stuck in the same cycle of poverty, a lot of kids find it hard to believe that there's any opportunity for them to be different, to be the ones who make it out and carve out a different way of life. It's like the American dream does not apply to them. Robert Clark was one of those kids. After losing his mother at a young age, Robert turned to the wrong people for guidance. That paired with the limited resources in his neighborhood meant that he found himself going down the wrong path that would almost guarantee continual incarceration or death. He spent several years in and out of prison early on in life, but when he was released from prison at 21, he'd had enough. He wanted out of the life he was living, so he cut ties with the people he'd been hanging around and tried to carve out a new life for himself. But it wasn't until he ran into an old friend that he found direction. This friend told him about an organization called Youth Build. Youth Build is a program that helps low-income children like Robert, who have dropped out of school to pursue their GED. When they're not studying, they're building housing for the homeless and low-income families in their neighborhoods. It's a two-fold approach. The kids are working on bettering themselves while doing something for people who are, in many ways, worse off than they are in the circumstances they've experienced. It shows them the path forward while giving them the chance to help others move forward, too. You build offers hope, structure, and expectations and the kids rise to the occasion. Today, Robert is the first Youth Build graduate to found and lead a Youth Build program. He has a passion for helping others to see their way of life he once lived. He knows these kids, he gets them, and he's committed to helping them because he was one of them. The early months of Youth Build program was a magical experience for me, Robert said. It introduced me to a voice that I didn't know I had. It was the greatest lesson for me about the power of love, opportunity, and expectation. They expected that I would be something, and they loved me until I learned to love myself. Youth Build is definitely about learning and building, but equally important, it's about community. The kids who are served by the program need someone to believe in them, and to see them, and believe in better for themselves. This is what Youth Build provides to them. For more good news, as well as daily motivational and empowering content, download the Good Spy app today from iTunes or Google Play. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Lewis is in the building. <laughs> Y'all don't understand me, man. This is, li listen, for some of you little young whippersnappers out there, uh, whoever your, 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 your main guy is in track and field that you look up to and you say, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, was most likely in, influenced by this guy. That's what I'm talking about, lady. Let, let me ask you something, man. Uh, it, what have you been up to? I know you, you're always about your business, so I know you got some kind of business thing going on. What you been up to? You know what, I, I, uh, believe it or not, I've been retired 19 years. The last Olympics was 20 years ago, and so um, I've just been around the country. I've lived in California for a while, lived on the East Coast for a while, and, and now I've been back in Houston. And I guess the big thing that people know about is I'm coaching at the University of Houston. I'm, one right. of, I'm the sprint coach there for the men. And you see you represent? Yeah, yeah, yeah always, you know, yeah, right. always do that. And, and uh, that's something I do actually, uh, I donate my salary back. So I don't even, that isn't, I, I go out and still work. And, and what I do outside of the coaching is I've started a relationship with Nike. I make appearances. Um, I, I'm a UN ambassador, so I spend a lot of time right. on the road. I'm a foster parent, uh, so I really? do that. Oh yeah, I'm a foster parent. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Um, and, and then I have a marketing and branding company, which is always into something new, and we just have a new product right now that we're working with called The Perfect Method. So mm -hmm. other than that, I just sit home and, and just kind of take three minutes a week off. <laughs> really? <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. I'm really pretty busy. Yeah. Now. I, that, that threw me off when you said you were still you were working with Nike because I remember in 88, Nike, didn't Nike pull their contract on, on yeah, you yeah. What, in 88 after yeah. the Olympics? What happened is um, my contract, basically my contract ended, we, they didn't renew and we had this big okay. argument and fight. Right. But, but you know what, it, it, um, I went somewhere else for, for five years and then at the end of that five years, a lot of people changed and things changed and right. then came back and I've been there ever since, since 95. Right. 
So what's going on with track and field in, in America, man? Why are we falling so far behind? Well, we got our hat brought to us yeah. in the Summer Olympics. What the hell happened? Well, you know what? It's interesting because, um, you know, the, the nature of the way sports change, and it's not just our sports, sports in general. We yeah. went from uh, I, what I call a P word, from performance uh, to potential. And so now that every sport huh. is pay to play, and I'm talking about when you're 12, 13 years old, number one, they're, they're giving everyone trophies, and then number two, uh, they're making you play all year long. It's really about trying to become a professional athlete when you're still like 12 years old. Right. Uh, the dynamics have changed. So it's, it's the one who's the loudest, the one who makes the most noise, who gets the attention. So it, from, when I went to the 2012 Olympics with Nike in London, I was appalled like everyone else. I'm like, are you kidding me? America did not win a gold medal in the 100, 200, 400. Uh, four by one, four by four, and long jump. First time in Olympic history. So, and you uh, used to get all those medals oh, by no, yourself. It was a wrap. I mean, look, we used to get all those medals from Houston. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. I, I mean, in '84 and '88, '92, '96, there was there was always a University of Houston gold medalist on right. the team. So I, I really, I, I, when I looked at it, I said something's not right that we've just fallen off. So when I moved back to Houston. I talked to my teammate, Leroy Burrell, who is a world record holder, and, right. and um, he's the head coach at Houston. And I just said, what is going on? And then we started looking at the other programs. It isn't that the other college programs are not any good. It's just that that's not their focus. So we decided that we were going to recreate a program like we had back in the 80s and 90s, the University of Houston and Santa Monica Track Club, and merge them into one program. Right. So we're a post-collegiate, <clears throat> Olympic-based college program. And in so doing, when the kids come in, I'm, I'm recruiting kids that want to go to the Olympics, not the ones that say, oh, I want to run fast, but I mean mm -hmm. the ones that are serious enough where I tell their parents, your child's going to be calling you complaining, but you know, because the workouts are hard, the, 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 the time is hard, I'm on top of them about their schoolwork, and they're going to say, this is the hardest thing I ever did in my life, but that's what it takes to get to that level. Right, right. You, you, you always, like, to me, anytime I've really seen you, like, in, in, involved in any context of track and field. I've always viewed you as like an ambassador and I'm glad that you're working in that capacity you know, with, with, with those entities that are involved in track and field because you've always been bold. I always say, you know, I don't like ambassadors. I don't like people who claim to be ambassadors for, for, for anything that aren't outspoken. Like if you see something wrong, you should speak up. And you've never been afraid to speak up. <laughs> and, and one of the things that you, you've spoken up, and it's been very unpopular you know, to, lately to, to speak out against Usain Bolt. Right. You know, you, you think Bolt is bolting some performings. Well, you know, you think, you think he's doping, though, right? Well, here's what, here's what I said. I, what I did is that, and I don't know exactly what he's doing, but what yeah. I said back in 19, I'm sorry, 2008, yeah. is that the Jamaican program came out of nowhere, really. Right. They had had success for years, right. but for every, all the years, uh, they had a certain plan. And then one year, everyone stays home, then they have all these fast times. And I just said, if you don't question that, then I, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, of course they attacked me, that's fine, I have no problem, I right. mean, that's it. But guess what, in 2013, they had a whistleblower from Jamaica, a woman that was in the drug testing program, that came out and said, I can't stay quiet any longer. But I just want to let you know, in 2012, we did not test a single athlete an entire year. Right. So they all went into the 2012 Olympics, and it wasn't just them, it was some other countries. And look at the times they ran. They all won. They were first, first and second in the 100, first, second and third in the 200. They won the relay, set the world record. Um, and then, you know, they just dominated in a way that hadn't been done, running nine sixes and 19 threes and all this stuff. Well, guess what? That happened. So then everyone comes in. They says we have to have some more scrutiny on not just their country, but, of course, Russia. Then Russia was banned from this Olympics. Uh, Kenya, the same thing. But guess what? We come back to this Olympics. 100 meters, 200 meters. Look at the time. It was 9.63 in 2012. It was 9.81 in 20, uh, 2016. The 200 was, uh, I think it was 19.3. Now it's 19.8. Um, the relay was 36.8. Now it's 37.3. You mm -hmm. see, it, there's a huge difference in the times. And it's not just that. Kenya didn't have a 5,000 meter. And those finals. seconds mean something, man. Those tenths of, tenths of a second mean yeah, something. Yeah, huge. So all of a sudden, the times dropped off dramatically. Yeah. Even, though, even in, the, in the, the Kenyans, I mean, they didn't have a single 5,000 meter finalist. Look at the Americans won the 1,500 in the, one of the slowest times. Mm -hmm. So the reality is that you, you have to be bold if you want to be a leader. When I, when I came into this sport, 
uh, 35 years ago, uh, I, I wanted to make it professional because I, I felt that why can't we be treated like professional football, baseball, basketball, uh, the other sports. So I spoke out and, and really led a charge with other people to turn our sport professional. Well, we, we were able to do that. You did, yeah. In the 80, yeah, because I said, I'm not going to stay here and be in this glorified slavery yeah. system of amateurism. And that's yeah. what I felt and said. So when we changed that, then I saw the drug issue became a problem. And my thing was, you know, people say, oh, my God, you just no, it's, it's bad business. It's bad mm -hmm. for business to have a drug problem. It's bad for business to, like the NFL knows, with concussions. This is bad for business. So I looked at it from that standpoint because that was my plan. I, was, I had an A plan. A plan was to become a, 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 a multimillionaire and successful track and field athlete. Mm -hmm. And so if we're not work, working on the brand, then we cannot have that success. And we did that. But now here we are 30 years later, and I see the sport declining. So we have to come back with new bold decisions and ideas. We can't just say, oh, you know, Bolt's great and Bolt's gone and when he's gone, the sport's gonna die. The reality is that it has been declining every year he's in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know what legacy he's gonna leave outside of the athleticism. Um, I say, and I believe, your legacy is not what you did in the sport, it's what you leave from the sport and what you do after. So he still has an opportunity Whoa. to build his legacy because Whoa. there is no legacy other than running fast down the track. Whoa. And it's not just him, but but uh, you have other athletes the same way. Man, that shit just gave me the chills, man, when you said that. It's like your legacy is what you leave the sport right. with. You know, it's like, what, what do you leave behind? Damn, uh, it's not necessarily what you're doing now. Um, do you think one of the reasons why people was so came down on you for criticizing Bolt is because you know you know he's from Jamaica and and not just him but Jamaica period yeah. is because Jamaica is a black country and that they, they're looking at it like you hey man you why know you, why back you off why, yeah exactly look I, you know what I call it an infantile evasion you know okay. so it's, right. it's and we see it every single week with Trump yeah I call I, I criticize you on policy you attack me personally right so. That's fine, okay, great. You can say, oh, Carl's a hater, he needs attention, he needs this, okay, great, fine. Yeah. But let's get back to the issue. The issue right. was, uh, whether it's Jamaica or Russia or any country, or even America in our period of time, it's, it's testing, it's, it's, um, it's answer the question. I'll just sit there and just wait for them to finish attacking me personally, it's okay. Right. Um, the funniest one to me is like, oh my God, he just needs attention because he's forgotten no one. I, look, I, I had my life, things are doing very well, it's funny, and I'm fortunate that I can still live off of the name and brand I created 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And so I don't really need anything. And I could just kind of tread through the waters and just do my own thing. But I think that you have to constantly try to build the sport that we help build. Whether it's me or Jackie Joyner or Michael Johnson or Edwin Moses, we worked hard to give them the sport they have. That's a good point because baseball, basketball, football, they will never let you forget their legends. Right. They always remind you, even golf, they say, tennis, these are the greatest to ever play the game. And they always manage to build the gap between the young and the older. They always do. Tennis is not like that. In fact, tennis reminds me a lot of like hip hop. You know, hip hop is not like that. Mm -hmm. Hip hop, when you get older, you know, people get very disrespectful the older right. you get. You know, they right. get, instead of being, instead of people being uh, grateful and, and complimentary, thank you for, you know, laying the foundation right. that my favorite rapper now walks on. They say, you know, uh, uh, my, uh, they like, oh, you, oh, you're hating, you know, you, oh, we don't want to hear that. You know, exactly. it's like, you, you don't have this unless you have that. Well, well they want, the thing is, is that, um, you, you want to own your own time now because of their only, they don't, the, the history. My athletes, uh, I've talked to three of the female athletes yesterday, there were three freshmen, and I asked them, what was the world record? What was the American record? What was the, uh, the college record? And what was the school record in your event? They did not know. And I said, so you don't even know what you're trying to do when right. you're out here every single day. I said, when I came to Houston, my personal best was 26 feet, eight inches. And I, I selected Houston over a bunch of other schools because he, that was the only coach, Tom Telez, that said, told me, I know how to get you to jump 29 feet. Because when I sat in my meetings, I'm like, well, I'm trying to figure out somebody to help me and, jump 29 and, feet. And you were jumping, what, 20 at 20, the time? I was jumping 25 at the time, and I was 17. 
I said, who's going to teach me? And they were like, oh, we're going to have a great team. I'm like, put the brakes. I said, I want to jump 29 feet. Ben Mina. Now, what was the record at that time? The record was 29. So right. I was 17, a 25 foot jumper, and I was already thinking of the world record. Right. So now I knew that, and I knew the American record, and I knew the second person. I knew all of that stuff. But we're so, uh, we have everything in the history of the world in our cell phone. So we don't have to read. We don't have to right. get this information. And that's what I tell like especially the young young brothers, they don't read. Right. Women are becoming successful because they always have a book in their hand when they're growing up. True that. The guy is just like, oh, I don't want to do that. They'll, they'll play the video game, but that, that girl's going to go somewhere and read a book. Right. She's going to broaden her vocabulary. Look at, even in hip hop, look at a lot of the, um, not just the language, because that's fine because that's their culture, mm -hmm. but just look at the, the lyrics. The lyrics are becoming simplistic because they don't have a vocabulary. Yeah, and every everybody thinks they can damn rap, right. and and it's hard to not convince them that they can't. Yeah, yeah. Well, because because you can <laughs> because the bar your, is like yeah, you can create yeah. your own reality. Look yeah. it, on the track. I mean, you could have eight lanes, and a kid comes up there and he says, "Man, I had a great race today." Well, guess what? He'll show lanes six, seven, and eight, and he was sixth, but he beat seven and eight. That's the world we live in, and yeah. and and I, I I just I just think that. We have to deal with the reality, and social media has allowed people to create their own reality. Whether mm -hmm. it's Facebook or Twitter, you know, these are people magazines to each other. Right. They, they just create it. And when kids come to me now, our sport at track and field, let's say the 100 meters, it is measured down to the 1,000th of a second. So I'll ask a kid, they'll say, I run track, I'm fast. I said, what's your time in 100? Oh, it's like, it's like, it, it, we know exactly what the time is. And I said, so it's easy for me. I don't have to sit here and do it. You're going to say, well, my time is this. Whenever you do a time, it's automatically on the computer. I can look it up in three seconds. But I always tell them, look, I don't even need a time. The eye in the sky, which is my eye, doesn't lie, and the time of my wrist never misses. So if I see you one, I could see if you can, and I could, I could time it and see if you do. Mm -hmm. You can't fake that funk. Where in the old days, we didn't even think we could. So we were always in the potential, not, uh, I'm sorry, the performance, not the potential. Right, right. Now, you were voted, this is a good, this is a nice little tiplet here. You were voted World Athlete of the Century by the International Association of Athletes Federation and Sportsman of the Century by the International Olympic Committee and Olympian of the Century by Sports Illustrated. Man, these are some hell of a, uh, 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 um, accolades to be bestowed upon one individual like of the century when you when you start thinking about the century uh one of the first persons that i mean you you, you got to think about the babe roots you got to think about lou alcinda you have to think about muhammad ali you know you it, you have to think about you know billy jean king you right, think right. about you you know you think about the you know the the, the arnold palmers the 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 the, the, the Willie Mays, you know, it's so, yeah. just so many great athletes, I mean, that who dominated their sports, dominated, dominated. And when you got, when these, when these people, when these, when these, when these recognitions started coming in, what was your reaction? First of all, I saw all of them out. I mean, yeah. I, all the names you mentioned, I met, I, I talked to, I listened to, I got advice from, I, I admired. And um, I learned from them. But when you, when you get that uh, type of accolade and you think like, okay, the Olympic Games was 100 years, uh, every sport, you know, ethnicity, color, country, and male, female, and they pick one person. I, I just don't think you can even understand the context. See, for me, um, when I was uh, 19, I was number one in the world and a world record holder. And so that was the year of my life changed when I took, in my 19th year. And so I'm 55 now. And so this is, that's when that happened and everyone stopped to know me and every place I went to, you know, go to the door, I met Carl. And that's been my entire adult life. So mm. by the time all these started to happen and I'm, I'm in my, you know, late 30s, 40s, it's just, it's a life that I'd always live. But, but I don't think you can even think about understanding the context of people saying that. Right. It's just, it's really weird to stop and think about, wow, what, 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 I mean, all these people and they pick you. It's just hard to describe it yeah. because if you do really try to put in the context, I, I don't think it's something you can take. Yeah. I just say, well, you know, I did what I did and, and I'm glad people recognize it. You know, I, mean, yeah. I don't even know how to describe that. Because when I think about it, I think about like, no, nah, I just named a handful of people just now that everybody know that's great. But equally, there are at least maybe a couple hundred more 
that are on those same levels right. that you can argue and say, no, it was Jim Brown. No, yep. it was this guy. Arthur Ashe. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you, you know, got the, oh, yeah, you can say, you can say it's Jim Brown. On it's, on. Like, it's just so, so many great athletes through the years. And to, to get that uh, an honor like that had to be something special. But I want to continue this discussion. Let's take a quick break. 